Geekbench finished, result uploaded successfully. Whoa, look at that score. And this score, and I have an Apple M4 processor with 64 gigs of RAM. How did I get these crazy scores? Well, everything you love. <laughs> It's a YouTuber in Russia that got a hold of a M4 MacBook Pro. Apparently 200 of these things fell off the truck somewhere. Now there are skeptics that say it's fake. And then there's people that believe that it's true. What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. But I'd like first to take a look at the Geekbench scores he got. You can go to Geekbench, search for Mac 16 comma one. By the way, that means 16th generation. One is the first release. There's uh, already five of these in here. These are pretty good scores. The single core score is 3,800 on average, I'd say. Multi-core score is approaching 15,000. And if we get in there, it's an M4 processor with 10 cores at about 4.4 gigahertz. Looking good. New chips, they're kind of expected to be better. If we put the previous few generations in a table, ranging from M2 Pro, the 10 core variety, the 12 core variety, M2 Max, M3, with eight cores and so on. Uh, the M4 has 10 cores and it's significantly higher clock speed is what contributes to these crazy single core scores that we're getting. Now, if we were to take this data and extrapolate it to what the M4 Pro and the M4 Max could be, well, let's be conservative here for a moment and say that they have 12 and 16 cores respectively, even though the M4 base model got two more cores than the M3 base model. But even with that small increase, we're at about 38 on average for single core. At that clock speed, we're getting up to 17,000 for multi-core score on the M4 Pro and almost 26,000 on the M4 Max. My predictions, of course, not the real thing. We're gonna see probably in a few months what the real thing will be. Here's the chart for the single core scores. They consistently go up. And here's the chart for this low side estimate of the multi-core scores. That M4 Max is going crazy. But what if the M4 Pro and the M4 Max got even more cores? For example, 14 cores for the M4 Pro and 20 cores for the M4 Max. We're talking about 19,800 multi-core score for M4 Pro and 32,000 for the M4 Max. The M4 Max would be a total monster at this point, not to mention what the M4 Ultra, I don't even want to think about that. That's going to be nuts. And if we think about it, then yeah, things are improving, obviously. And perhaps these Geekbench numbers for the M4 are in fact right, but you have to be a little skeptical, right? Apple doesn't easily just lose MacBooks. Can this data be faked? And the unfortunate answer is yes, it can. Why would they do it? I don't know. They are getting quite a lot of views on this video, but uh, for an 11 million subscriber channel, it's not that many. Now, you might also ask, well, it's in Geekbench. It must be real. How do they do that if they faked it? It's kind of similar to how I did it with my MacBook Pro M2 Max resulting in this crazy score for an M2 Max and saying that it's an Apple M4. In case you're wondering if I pressed F12 and changed the numbers here, yeah, you can certainly do that. You can put anything you want here. It's a, a little uh, HTML trick. Somebody got taken to court for that once. Anyway, if I refresh the page, that should be reset. This result does actually exist. You can go to this and check it out yourself. For now, I don't know how often Geekbench prunes these things. But you'll also notice that this result has been flagged as inaccurate, which is not the case for the Geekbench results that we're seeing for the Mac 16 comma 1. Two questions. One is, how did I get this result up to Geekbench? Essentially faking the results. And two is, why does it have this uh, red line up here? To answer the first question, I would need to probably show you some stuff that I can't show you, or maybe YouTube will take my video down. But I will give you the 30,000 foot view. You download Geekbench and you run it locally on your machine. When the results are ready, they automatically get sent via the web protocol, HTTP and HTTPS. They get sent to Geekbench browsers and they get sent as JSON data. I was able to capture that data. This is what it looks like. And you can see all the scores here, all the stats, what operating system I'm running, what is my MacBook model number? MacBook model number for those that are in the marketing department. <laughs> the chip, the clock speed, 
All these things and even individual test results are sent over to Geekbench. Now, instead of sending it directly to Geekbench, if you can intercept it, you can overwrite that result before it goes out to Geekbench. This is a thing that's been known for a long time and there's a name for it, a nice name called proxy. You can set up a proxy on pretty much any machine. Now, sometimes the proxy can be uh, a separate machine somewhere else, a server, or you can set up a local proxy like I did running on my Mac. MacBook. So any kind of HTTP or HTTPS communication that goes from my MacBook to somewhere else to another server is intercepted by that proxy and I can examine it and overwrite its contents. Now I made a more detailed video describing this process and how I set it up for members of the channel. I don't want to have that video be in public view, but members of the channel would be able to check out the details specifically. So am I saying that the Russian YouTuber did this? Well, I don't know if they did this. And if they did it, they would probably be a little bit more careful about out of all the numbers in here to make it look even more realistic because along with the payload Geekbench sends something called a checksum. This is a security feature to make sure that the data is valid. I didn't take the extra step to decipher that and see how that checksum is put together. It's probably a hash of the results or something like that. There may be a key involved, but uh, they may have. Here's another result I got. Now, because my checksum didn't match the results, the results are here in Geekbench. You can check this one out too. Look at this crazy score, 29,000 for a M2 Max machine. It's stored in Geekbench servers right now, however, it says this result has been flagged as inaccurate. You probably just need to reverse engineer that checksum and how it's calculated, and then you can get rid of this red message along with whatever data you pass to Geekbench. I know some of you will say, oh, look, he showed the, the back of the box. Oh my gosh, it's got a, a model number on there that we've never seen before. Well, we know the existing model numbers of all the Apple machines. Apple publishes these. And of course, I went to look this up on the Apple site and this number does not exist, but you can also also make up pretty much any number and slap it on the back of a sticker on the back of your computer and there you go. One suspicious thing about this video that raises some flags is the front of the box. The design is from the M3 box. Apple changes their design on the box every single year. They're not going to reuse the M3 box for their M4s. You could say that maybe this is the first run that's going out to reviewers and people that are checking it. So Apple didn't bother creating a new box just yet. They're still in the process of doing it. You could say that, of course. Anything can be explained away. So do I think that they cheated? I don't know. I don't know. It's possible that they cheated, and it's also possible that maybe they got their hands on the M4. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And always keep in mind that things are not final until Apple says, here you go, this is what we're releasing. There's always gonna be rumors. Some of them are gonna be true and some of them are gonna be false. So take it with a grain of salt. Now I plan to finally upgrade my M2 Max this year. So I'm gonna be doing tests and more videos on that. Make sure you don't miss that. That's it for today. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you next time.